See, being a dad was always pretty simple. Just love them and hug them and let the rest take care of itself. I bet I didn't change more than half a dozen diapers all those years. And she's turned out just fine. Molly's as cute as a bug's ear. And smart. Smarter than me from the word go. Molly makes me laugh. Her sister Mamie I see more often, but I don't laugh as much. And my son Dwight, well, that's for another time. Anyway, you probably know that until a year ago, I was a percussionist on Broadway, one of the best. And lately, I've been thinking about coming out of retirement. Thought it might be nice to tune up the old drums, dust off the old sticks, get back in the pit, wait for the downbeat, and thump them tubs. Tell you this, though, the theater isn't what it used to be. Take the restrooms. There aren't enough of them, they're too far away, and if you wait till the end of the act, you gotta stand in line, hopping on one foot. So I'm going now. You go when you feel like it. Couldn't they have possibly made this show any more gruesome? The Spanish Inquisition, Mom. It's meant to be a little bizarre. Singing heads on pikes, that's amusing. Whatever happened to a love song, Gently Warbled? Frank Rich liked it. Who? Look, Ma, are you just generally cranky with the whole world, or what? I found an apartment today. Hmm? Two bedrooms, each in kitchen on the east side. You can almost see the river. It's perfect. Well, it sounds wonderful. Did you tell Daddy? Uh, ah. Oh, he will never go for it. He hates the city. I need a plan. Mom, I thought you said you had a plan, you know, some kind of heavy-handed deception. Yes, I was going to threaten to divorce him. Well, maybe you should talk to him first, you know, and then file the papers. Maybe it's worth a try. What's worth a try? Um, I'm going to the ladies' room. You two stay here and chat. Ah, you feel it, Molly? The pulse, the rhythm? One thing about this old city, she never slows down. Well, of course, that is why many people enjoy living here. Are you kidding? But... Smell it. It stinks. Dad, listen, uh, you know, maybe it's none of my business, but I kind of get the feeling that you and Mom should be talking to each other more these days. Really? Really. What about? Oh. You're right. It's none of your business. Hey, look at this street. Hey, look at those taxis. They expect you to stand in line? No, maybe. Hey, listen, so how come you were late for the show? Oh, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Oh. Traffic. Molly, did you by any chance tell Mom about our lunch last week? I don't remember. Why? Oh, nothing. I just thought you might have, that's all. <laughs> so how about tomorrow? What? Lunch. Again? You're right. That's silly. <laughs> we'll do it Friday. Say, Molly, do you remember that time I took you to the top of the Empire State Building? Oh, I do. Yes. No, no, you weren't around. I, I don't know where you were. It was just me and Molly. Yes. We had a hell of a day. <laughs> hey, my girls. <laughs> <laughs> Rose red, snow white. <laughs> hey, Molly. Molly died. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Nick? Is that you? Who else? Broadway Donatello. Huh. Look, Mom, this is Molly Dodd, the one I've been telling you about. Molly, this is my mom. Yeah, soon. It's her birthday. We're kind of painting the town. Top of the world, huh, Ma? Yeah. Don't you think the show's a little gruesome for her? Are you kidding? She's Sicilian. She loves this. Hey, so, Molly, I bet you've been wondering why you haven't been seeing me around lately, huh? Yeah. Oh, I've been up nights. The reason for that is they took me off the truck, kicked me upstairs. I'm driving a desk now. Yeah, but that don't mean I don't still think about you. Well, that's nice to hear, I guess. Yeah. So how you doing? Uh, swell. Uh, I've been swell. I'll tell you what, now that I'm an executive, maybe you call me sometime. Can't hurt to have friends in high places. No, you're right about that. Department of Reclamation, that's a toll-free number. I'm getting these little business cards printed up. Yeah, oh, I gotta go. Uh, but, but don't forget about me this time, okay? Uh, nice to meet you, Mrs. Donatello. Hey, call me, Molly. It could be beautiful. It could be magic. It could be the pits, but we gotta try, you know? Uh, 
No, I say it's not what you think. <laughs> he used to be my garbage man. Uh, I think I have to go in now. Come on, Daddy. Time for act two. The Big Apple. I'm coming back. Start spreading the news. Evening. Oh. Uh... Yep, there it is. Sign of things to come. Technology running rampant. Of course, in the old days, that being last week, I'd have had it fixed in a jiff. But this self-service flat of a daddle could be any of a billion moving parts. Davy, how am I going to get to my apartment? The old-fashioned way, Shank Smear. Oh, God. Unless, of course, it's some kind of dire emergency. Ah, uh, um, see, I didn't have a chance to go at the theater. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? Desperate times, desperate measures. Meaning what? A freight elevator in the back. Oh. Oh, by the way, here's your mail. Mostly bills. What are you doing with my mail? Just holding it for you. A little service I like to provide now that I'm the doorman and all. Uh, do you have a key to my mailbox? And I hope the key to your heart. Now, do you want to just stand here arguing about it, or shall we just ride? Second warning on that gas bill. You ought to pay it. Not that it's any of my business. Mm Yes? Molly, talk to him. Mom? Edgar? It's your daughter on the line. Oh, no, I... Tell her it's none of her business. Mom, you know, it sounds like it's none of my business. You'll have to call back. No, I'm not going to call back. Call back in an hour. He'll talk to you then. No, I'm not going to do it. Mom? <sighs> I won't do it. <sighs> and I won't do this either. Mind if I come in? No, 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 come in, come in. Wait, let, let me get you a chef's lounge. Oh, no, thanks. No, listen, I'll just uh, stand here and sweat. Yeah, it's kind of humid here, isn't it? Only if you're wearing clothes. Yeah. I was just, um... Getting a suntan. No, looking for some shells. Thinking about you. You got my card? I didn't mean for you to come all the way up here. The guys said that you were in trouble. Are you in trouble, friend? Me? Nah. Oh. Well, listen, in that case, maybe I'll just uh, ride the next wave out of here. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. It just, it's kind of a long story. I can't just, you know, blurt it out in five easy pieces. Okay, then maybe I can get you started. Let's see. Uh, the last time I heard from you, you were in Texas. You were playing backup for those mischief makers from Deliverance. One night. Well, out of nowhere, I, 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 I couldn't play anymore. Everything I, uh, everything I played was flat, it was dead, no spark. So I put my sax in the case, and uh, I did some traveling. You bought some boots. Yeah. Great boots. You know, maybe you'll let me see them sometime. So I. I know a guy who owns this place. And I came here. And that's kind of my story. And a heck of a story it is. Yeah, I figured you'd understand. I don't, Fred. I really don't. See, now, I understand the part about you leaving. I get that. Heaven knows you've done that enough times. But, I mean, coming here, hiding out in a swimming pool? No, where else am I going to go? I can't go home. Why not? What, because of Kirsten? I thought you said that was over and done with. It's not Kirsten. I did it for you. That's why I left New York, for you. Don't you see that? Come on, you were struggling, I was getting in the way, we were both going I around in circles. I wasn't struggling, I was doing okay. Let's not fence around here, Molly. I wrote you a card to let you know why I was alive and you show up here. What do you expect from me? 
For you to just see yourself. You know, you are just so pathetic. Or I am so pathetic. I mean, the situation is pathetic. This place is pathetic. Molly, when I dream at night, I dream of you. Dreaming of me. Dreaming of you. So what do we do now? I don't know. You gotta find somebody else, Molly. It's the only way. You gotta find somebody else. I can't do it. Just leave everything to me. Say hello to the guys for me, will you? I'll do that. Excuse me, uh, what is it? Was I picking my nose? What? Well, I mean, you were looking at me just now, uh, kind of oddly, right over there. Now, you know, I say oddly because as a general rule, you don't at all. You know, you look at my feet or your feet, but you never look at my face. I'm, am I doing something wrong, Mr. Goodman? No, uh, Moss. Sorry. Uh, no, I don't think that could be possible. Uh, well, uh, yes, it could. But I do like to feel that I'm doing a good job. Y I, you're my employer. I mean, if there's anything... Uh, I like to cook, if that's what you meant. I... It's not what you meant. Huh? No, uh, but I... I see, I, I, th I was looking at your forehead, I think. Mm -hmm, the way it wrinkles when you frown. It's uh, eddies of sorrow softly glimmering in an ocean of sighs. Did you just make that up? Oh, no, no. Not me. It's a V.J. Rapanji, 1908-1961. a novelist. And he made it up. I just said it. Well, it's very poetic. And very novel. <laughs> uh, Miss Dodd, um, uh, I, um, uh, um, were, were you, were, uh, Will you look at all this? Honestly, Molly, Mom told me you were working in a bookstore, but I never imagined it was so quaint and so full of books. Mamie. Hi. Hi. Mm. Do you work here, too? Uh, he kind of owns the place. Whoops, the boss. Better be careful what I say around him. Uh, Why? Why what? You said that... that no, she was only joking. Just joking. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll be in the back. Well, he seems very nice. Uh, so, Mamie, what can I do for you? Are you slumming or what? Silly, it's Friday. Our lunch date, remember? Huh, yeah. You know, it's 4.30 in the afternoon. It's a little late for lunch. You're right. We'll skip lunch. I'll just browse. Sure, browse away. <laughs> You will tell Mom I stopped by, though. I mean, I if she calls. Well, I don't... Oh, come on, Molly. She always calls you. Well, then I'll tell her. Uh, is anything all right, Mimi? Hmm, peachy. Why? Well, for one thing, that's the phone book you're reading. Oh, isn't that clever? Ah, and see, for another thing, I don't quite understand why you're here. Uh, in Manhattan, I mean. Well, I just told you, you I mean... fear this island. You know, and now you drive in every other day, you're late for the theater, you make lunch dates you don't keep. Curiouser and curiouser. I should be going home now. Maybe your buttons aren't buttoned. And you're not wearing stockings. Uh, sis, look, I know we're not the best of pals, but... Yes, you know nothing. No, that's true. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm completely baffled. That's right. Jump to conclusions. Everybody does. Molly can do anything she wants, but let me so much as blink my eyes and the whole town's talking. That's what you mean, isn't it? Well, at least I'm not fooling around with a garbage man. Oh, don't think I didn't see the other night at the theater. That large man and his old mother. I'm not a dope, you know, despite what everybody says. Mamie, I think you're trying to tell me that you are having an affair. 
I most certainly am not. Oh. Affairs are cheap. Sorry? Affairs are for people who slink in the night. Gotcha. Men with black socks. Mm-hmm. I'm all right now, Molly. Well, good. But if you were seeing him, that, that large man, mm -hmm. and, and if he made you happy and he brought you joy, even though he wasn't of your own class, and if he made you feel, however temporarily, that you were the most beautiful woman in the world, and if you were fragile in his arms, then you wouldn't criticize me. Well, thanks for being so understanding, Mamie. You know, Molly, everyone's entitled to a little happiness once in a while. Even me. Um, so, uh, I, uh, hmm? you say you like to cook. Uh, this should be getting thick by now. Maybe you forgot to add something. I think maybe I forgot to add something. Yeah, uh, maybe flour, you know, or flowers. <laughs> mm, roses, carnations, carnation instant soup. You know, you are an interesting guy. You know that, Mr. Goodbar? Oh, whoops, sorry. Moss. You mind if I call you Moss? Because I don't think I've ever actually known a person who could be so cute, you know? And have absolutely no sense of humor whatsoever. Unless you do have a sense of humor. And it's just that it's so deep or so sublime or so weird that um, it just goes right over my head. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't say anything about... Uh soup in there uh, but something's wrong with this it looks very uh <laughs> angry <laughs> well, i think you should maybe just keep stirring it you know and then uh we kind of uh, hit it a couple of times mm. Ooh, ah. oh ah get the red out molly old are you? What? What's your sign? You know, at Taurus, Aries, Dodd, Zephyr? I mean, astrologically speaking, where does a guy like you fit in? For instance, I mean, there could be a sign for you of, you know, something eccentric like, uh, well, like a windmill. And uh, there could be another one for me, uh, people like me, people who seem a little lost in the mist. You're starting to gel. Or... Uh, this is working, I think. It's uh, thicker than it was. Well, it, it looks thicker. And it's got clumps in it. Clumps. Is that right? Yeah. Clumps, 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 clumps. No, it doesn't say anything about clumps. When did it I probably used too much flour. Oh. You know, Boswell was a cook. Where, where did I find cook? And my father cooks too. Now, his father was a chef Why don't you in Lithuania. He cooked mutton. That's what they ate there. Okay. The hills were just teeming with muttons. So they cooked them and ate them. This is definitely getting thicker. Should I keep stirring? Molly? Hello? Where are you? 
Bit of a nip in the air tonight, Miss Dodd. Clear and cold, coming off the river. Elemental. You'll be wanting a coat. Uh, I'll need a taxi. Now, that ain't like you. Not to mention finding one at this hour. Uh, seems to me you'd be better off hoofing it. Unless you're going far. Um, I have to go home now. Nothing serious, I hope. It's my dad. He's um, very ill. He'll be needing me. I'll get that cab. Um, he was in his car with his drums, driving toward the city. And nobody knows why. And then he pulled over, and that's where they found him. But he wasn't alive anymore. And his drums were right there in the back seat. And nobody knows why. Hey! Right here, Miss Dodd. Nobody knows said about all this, the better. Thank you very much. In my family, we were taught that grief is a private matter. Like underwear, you don't leave it lying around for strangers to stare at. So, my husband Edgar was a wonderful man and a good provider with a keen sense of humor. He played the drums. He adored music. He gave me 40 good years and three healthy, though not particularly ordinary, children. He would have been 62 next month, and we shall all miss him very much. But I will miss him the most, because he was my man. Affairs. No, that much is obvious. But when it comes to arts and crafts, where would we be without their unique and clever beadwork? More the poorer, I dare say. You know what, Rev? You're an imbecile. Ah, and how's this going? I was just thinking about putting a tomahawk through the Reverend's head. Really? Uh, of course. Times like these, we're all upset. Very stressful. Well, so now, is that fun, playing Terrify the Clergy? Man's a moron. Yes. It's good to see you, though, sis. And I'm glad you're here. You know, we almost didn't find you. I've been a little out of touch. What, on the reservation? District court. In Phoenix, class action suit. I'm a paralegal now. Huh. How about yourself? Uh, I'm kind of a para bookseller. Well, that's funky. Yeah, it's groovy, too. So he just sort of stopped, huh? Dad? Oh, yeah. I hear he uh, had his drums in the back seat. I like that. His arrows in his quiver. Yeah, and the buffalo strapped to his hood. <laughs> you know, you really are kind of terrifying with these pigtails. That's the whole point. Yes. Maybe I'll go terrify the reverend a little more. Dwight, no, you know, this is a funeral reception, you know, not Little Bighorn. I'll try to keep that in mind. He couldn't get a haircut. Well, he likes his hair, Mom. I thought the day of the hippie was over. He's not a hippie. He's a paralegal. What is that? Ah, uh, you got me. So, everything hunky-dory? Everything's just fine. Um, my house is full of strangers, six inches of mud on the carpets, and we're running out of hors d'oeuvres. What could be better? The wine could be a lot better. What is this stuff, anyway? Bulk Mogan David, aged in industrial vats. Spared no expense, huh, Florence? You'll get used to it. And wipe your feet. Oh my God, if I don't get some food, I'm going to starve. Oops. I'm okay. No, it's okay. We're all okay, right? Yeah. Uh. <sighs> Rev.
Reverend, hey, so what's doing? <laughs> Boy, there is a couple of little savages. Mm, you're telling me. Um, some, somebody ought to get them under control, don't you think? Mm, you're telling me. Whose kids are they, anyway? Mine! <sighs> Molly! Oh! Mike Sales. Cousin Mike. From Balmer. Cousin Mike? Yeah, from Balmer. Don't you remember me? Well, I... I know, you know, I've drawn a blank. I, um... I had that sailboat. We went sailing together in a Chesapeake Bay. Your family and my family. Oh, huh. well, yeah, it must have been a long time ago. I fell overboard. I almost drowned it. It was a beautiful boat, though. You don't remember, do you? I honestly, no, I don't. Um... It sank. So it goes. Uh -huh. Gee, I, yeah, I'm really sorry. I... It's okay. I never could bring myself to get another one now. Well, I... So, I... You're still living in Baltimore, No, then? no, no, not exactly. I'm kind of, uh... Here. Visited in the city now. Really? I, I'm with your family? No! Bonnie and I separated a couple of months ago. She's pretty bitter. Ooh. God, uh... It's okay. I hardly think about it much. I'm really busy now, looking for a job. You mean you're relocating? No. <laughs> I got laid off. Oh, after the operation. But things are going to be OK, just as soon as my leg heals and I find a place to live. Huh. I, uh, where are you uh, staying now? In my car. You... It's not so bad, just so long as I don't forget my keys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, well, ah, uh, Cousin Mike, gee, uh, I sure hope everything turns out right for you. Hey, thanks. Uh -huh. And Molly, uh -huh. I'm really sorry about your father. Oh. That piece of bad luck. Did he tell you about his wife? Uh-huh. How about his boat? Mm hmm How about his dog? What about his dog? You don't want to know. And you know, who is that man? It's your cousin Mike from Baltimore. I just think you might have written once in a while, that's all. Well, you know, Mamie, the Lakota Sioux have a saying, what is absent in the eye is written in the heart. Oh, really? So who? So how's that proctologist you married? Grolnick? Len is doing very well, not that it matters to you even a jot. Does the National Endodontistry Council Steering Committee mean anything at all to you? Yeah, a bunch of proctologists, right? For your fat information, Len makes a lot of money, and we have a very big house and a kitchen twice this size and a microwave. Hey. Where is this Len? Oh, he's around. How are things between you guys? Why? What did Molly tell you? What? Oh, you think you're so smart, don't you? Just because you live in a wigwam and eat rattlesnakes. What do you know about suffering? Children, children. Well, Mom, honestly. I'll thank you to remember where you are. We're in the kitchen. A small one. How long will you be squatting in this part of the country? I thought I'd crash here for a couple of days. You don't crash where you already live. Your room is dusted and ready, as always. Dwight doesn't live in rooms. He sleeps in trees. I thought I'd hang around and help with the legal stuff, the will. And... What will? Uh, your father left a little something in trust for each of you. I never knew that. No reason for you to know? Yeah, well, well then how come he knew? His pop told us years ago. Oh. Oh, he told you because you were the man of the family. No, he told all of us, or at least Molly and me. I remember the night. He sat us down at that table right in there, and he said he had something really important to, um, uh, oh. And where was I? You were on a hayride. I was not on a hayride. I was never on a hayride. I bet all of you were on a hayride, and you didn't even tell me about it. Well, I'll tell you this. Hay is for horses. Hi. 
nice to be back in the bosom of the family, isn't it? <laughs> Nina, are you shadowing me? Hmm? Dogging my heels, clinging at my skirts. You haven't left my side for the last two hours. Why don't you go to the bathroom by yourself? Ah, but you waited outside the door. So I'm being a little protective. Who is that woman? Who? I, the one over there. Is that blue dress, dark hair, the pretty one. She's just strangely familiar. Got me. Let's go for more eats. Mm. That's Andrea. Who? A real doll. We had a long talk. She's a cellist. Oh, God. And she played in an orchestra with your father. She's pretty broken up about all this. Oh, my God. Folks oh. sure loved that man, didn't they? Some folks more than others. What's that supposed to mean? I knew I'd seen her somewhere before. Right. In the orchestra, strumming a cello. No, in a restaurant, strumming my dad. Oh, God. That, Andrea. Now what do we do? Well, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, we have to do something, don't Something we? would be in order, yes. OK, then we'll just throw her out. Or we could ask her to leave. Or we could just stand here paralyzed. That's probably what we're going to do, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Some funny joke. Hey, Junior. Uh -huh. Well, isn't this festive? What? Can we turn it down a little, Mom? Why don't I just turn it off? Well, it's okay by me. What a relief. How's it going down there? Oh, swell. The Reverend said you kind of bailed out of the proceedings. I didn't bail out. I'm taking a breather. So, you want some company? No. I want a hot dog. Don't they ever serve hot dogs at funerals? No, I don't think so. They save those for ball games, 4th of July. No, but if you really want one. No, no, it's all right. Hot dogs make me ill anyway. Uh-huh. I'm trying to keep my mind off other things. Well, uh, sure. I... The vacuuming. I vacuum every Thursday. It's a habit. Edgar thinks it's crazy, but that's how I know where I am in the week. Well, this is probably not the best time to fire up the old Electrolux, Mom. Why don't you wait until everybody's gone home? They're tramping on my carpets, Molly. Uh, well, you said that. They're leaving sandwiches behind the drapes. They're dumping wine in the rhododendrons. They're probably stealing the bric-a-brac. Well, uh, they're clever, all right, but we're not fooled, are we? Well, we're Pickfords, Mom. De gustibus non est disputandum. Well, that's not what I meant. No matter what it means. Tell you what. Later on, why don't you and Dwight and Mamie and I just go somewhere? Where? Someplace relaxing. Someplace silly. I'd like, if there's a ball game, we should go to it. So what do you say? I can't do it, Molly. Oh, Mom. I have to vacuum. Oh. Uh-huh. Hey, you! Wait for me! Oh, Mamie. <clears throat> Mamie, listen, I'm sorry about what I said before about the kids. This was his hat, you know. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you like to fish. Oh, yeah, sure, I remember. I like fish, too. I like the way they swim all up and down in the water. Like little shoes. Shoes? Little brightly colored shoes. That was the question, wasn't it? So Dad was seeing somebody. So what? No, no, he wasn't actually seeing somebody. It was just once or twice. You know, in some Apache tribes, a chief could have as many as 12 wives. Well, that, of course, is a comfort. Come on, sis. You know he loved Mom. Kind of nice to think of him feeling the life force right up to the end. Uh-huh, with a cellist. loved wood. I loved the smell of it, the feel of it. Too bad you had to put him in the ground. You should have put him high up. That's where he belonged. What about you? No, uh, I don't like heights. 
No, the life force. Getting any lately? You are my little brother. Excuse me, do I really have to talk to you about this? No. Yeah, Mom said Fred kind of went off the deep end. It's too bad. I kind of miss seeing him around here. I liked him. Well, you would. Birds of a feather. <laughs> he was good for you, sis. Hey, listen, you little peckerhead. You know, you're just getting a little bit too big for your britches. Peckerhead? Yes. That's what Dad used to call me. Uh, you're right. <laughs> Oops, slip of the tongue. Remember when the ladder broke and he couldn't get down off the roof? Oh, Dwight, come on. Remember how I used to love to hear you sing, Peg of my heart? Would you just knock it off? I don't want to spend all afternoon here, really. What are you doing? I got to feel my toes in the earth. Fine. Fine. Why don't we all get undressed? Ho, 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 Everything's under control. Oh, this is a disaster. Where's the mop and glow? Oh, no, really, come on. Uh, take her out of here. I'll clean up the mess. You, uh, let me do something to help. Please. Okay, fine. There it is! Oven cleaner. Mother. Yes, out of my Mother, way. Out I... of my... Not oven cleaner. Not in a hot oven. No. Believe me, I know from whence I speak. It's it... my oven no. right now! Oh, oh, oh. Yes. In there. We're all going on a hayride all the live long day. There, 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 oh, there. Mame, no. Shall we go to my room now? I have always depended on the kindness of strangers. Oh, oh, that's from a play or, or something, right? I'm hearing sirens. Do I hear siren? The fire department. I think somebody called them. Well, go out and tell them it's a false alarm. I wouldn't do that. I'd ask him in. Whee! Whee! Ho, ho, ho! Go <sighs> So, how was it? Oh, fine. Everybody behaved themselves? You bet. Well, then, that's that, I suppose. I suppose. Except for the fact that you've got a big clump of mud sticking to your coat, and twigs in your hair, and what I'm hoping are wet leaves clinging to the bottom of your shoe. Life goes on, Miss Dodd. Count on it. Break of my heart, I love you, don't let us part, I love you, I always knew it would be you, since I heard your lilting laughter. Molly, I'm sorry. Hmm. Well, you're a little late, Fred. As usual. Yeah. Well, you know, I... I just heard about it this morning. I got here as fast as I could. And then, uh... I didn't think I'd be exactly welcome out there. So I waited for you across the street. Been there for hours. I think most people thought I was some kind of derelict. I froze my toes off. I come in? I mean, there's nothing here, really. It's all just kind of empty. Yeah. I know what you mean. Go along thinking how you're going to do this, do that. Skating on ice, floating on charm. Yeah, well, you know, you're not going to make me cry, Fred. I hate to cry. That would be okay, too, you know. 
My brother was right. You know, he should have been up high. Somewhere high. You know what? I think that's where he is right now. Do you? I know so. Yeah? You know a lot, huh? I mean, you're just full of wisdom. You have all the answers right at your fingertips. You know everything there is about the world. You know everything there is to know about me. But where the hell were you when it hit the fan? I already explained that. Yeah, you I were was... standing across the street, Fred. I know that. That's you, Fred. That is always you. The one place you will always be is standing across the street. Let me just warm up my hands and I'll go. Just... And... Mm. Mm. Molly, hey, mm. Molly. <sighs> came in to tell you I love you. Well, oh, that's big news. Oh, you think it's a lead pipe cinch? I'm kind of confident, yeah. Uh -huh. But this I love you is different. I want you to put it away. Freeze it. Keep it safe. Why? You going somewhere? For when you need it. Someday when you need it. Then it'll be there. Okay? Okay. Dad, I gotta go. Have a ball, kid. Yeah, I will. Shouldn't you wear a sweater? I'll be fine. Remember what I said, pumpkin? Don't worry, Dad. Dr. Jive skipped the premises the morning after and hasn't been heard from since. Really, is that such a surprise? Anyway, chin up and greet the new day. Let's concentrate on the good things. Here's what's new since my husband's funeral. My daughter Mamie is wearing clothes again. Her brother Dwight has split for Nova Scotia to study the lost art of birch bark canoeing. And Molly has finally finished redecorating her living room. It's really quite attractive now. Or will be once she gets rid of those shirts and pants and blankets and sheets. Not to mention the stranger in her bathroom. Grub's almost ready. No, Mike, I can't. I, I gotta go to work. Eggs and hash browns, doll. A real bummer breakfast. It's spicy, though, so look out. <laughs> I was gonna fry some steaks, but I kind of ran out of cash. W what happened to the money I gave you yesterday? Boy, talk about it. I had it in my wallet, and then, I don't know, it was gone. Maybe somebody took it. I couldn't believe it myself. It was like, you know, a stroke, stroke of bad, of bad luck. luck. Right. Story of my life. Mike. 40 miles of bad road. Listen, you know, it's not that I'm not happy having you stay here. I... Well, no, I know that things haven't been going well for you lately, and after all, you are my cousin, even though I don't know exactly how you're my cousin, since you don't seem to belong to any identifiable side of my family. You're running low on Tabasco. Well, be that as it may. See, um, you've been here now for a couple of weeks, and I was wondering if I... Say no more, doll. Oh, thanks. Uh... Now the cold snap's over, I can go back to sleep in my car. Or you could just keep staying here. I do know a guy over on the east side. 
Uh, we were in the service together before, you know, I took the bullet. You were shot? The thing just went off. I almost lost the tip of my nose. Ah, uh, uh, so anyway, about this friend. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe I could stay with him. Well, I'm sure of it. I'll set it up. I'll be out of here by tonight. <laughs> in the meantime, you're going to be needing a little cash. No, really, I couldn't. Mike, um, are you ever going to tell me, not that it matters, just exactly how it is that we're related? Aunt Mary's nephew. Oh. Aunt Mary? I... You know, Mim. From Cincinnati. With the cabbage ear. Mim. You got it. I... Uh... Davy. Your carriage awaits, Miss Dodd. Well, it's funny working. The miracle of self-service, such as it is. Well, I'm excited. But now, wait, I mean, if this is self-service, why are you here? Press a floor. Any floor. Okay, how about lobby? Excellent choice. You did that on purpose. Ain't me, it's her. The soul of old Betsy. She may have a new face, but underneath, she's still the same temperamental old gal. She needs me, Miss Dodd. <laughs> All right, gangway. Hello? Anybody here? Moss? It's 9.15. Shouldn't we be opening the store? Moss? Uh, I'm going to turn the lights on now, OK? Because I'm beginning to feel just a little bit like Audrey Hepburn in Wait Until Dark. Remember Richard Crenna? Okay, you know what? I, if this is some kind of burglary, I think that you should know right now that I have a very large dog here with me now. I, Torvald, sit. Oh. Torvald. Uh, it just sort of came to me. I knew a man named Torvald. Manufactured munitions in Bremen. Went up in a fireball just before the war. Burnt to a crisp. Ooh, uh, I'm sorry. Don't be. He was a Nazi. Don't panic. He doesn't seem dangerous. Uh, he was uh, here in the office. Ah. Have you ever seen him before? Yes, I think so. He, he's my father. Be careful. She has a dog. Hmm. I don't understand. Uh, what dog? I've been looking over the inventory accounts. Someone has been making entries. Uh, uh, that would be me. I was just trying to help. I, it's in pencil if you want to erase it. Nonsense. I'm impressed. We'll have lunch at my club. Is that agreeable? I can't. I, I'd like to, but I can't. I, I have to meet my mother. She's looking for an apartment. Uh, see, my father died recently, and I have to help her, and that's why I can't. Uh, have lunch. No, that's fine. No, that's fine. We'll have brunch. Yeah, you know, he's not at all what I expected. When you said he was an entrepreneur, well, I mean, naturally, I just conjured up this image of just some kind of you know, sort of overblown, overweight mogul, you know, cigar smoke belching out of him like a factory. But I mean, well, he's not like that at all, is he? I thought he was in Cuba. Uh, Moss, not that it's any of my business, but um, do you two ever actually speak to one another? My feet hurt. Okay, none of my business. He likes you. Me? Oh, no, I... These look delicious. I mean, they're exotic. What are they? Something somebody killed. It's probably part of a bird. Here we are. Hi. Uh, I have to go to the bathroom. Uh, we'll be here. <laughs> so, uh, how's old Fidel? Who? Castro, I... Uh, thought that maybe that's who we were talking to on the phone. Uh, Moss said that you'd just been in Cuba. No, I've been in China. Oh, 
Uh, well, oh, that's lovely, too. You've been there? No. Uh, well, not actually. I mean, I'd like to go. Uh, I love Chinese food, Sichuan, but uh, I guess that's not the same, is it, as actually being there. I, I just seem to be babbling. You remind me of my second wife. Uh, oh. <laughs> huh, that would be two out of... Seven. Seven. And you? Me? Uh, one. Uh, only just the one. <laughs> Seven. Gee, I... That's a lot, isn't it? In the end, one dies for love. Well, of course. <laughs> and my son? Uh, Moss. Uh, he's, uh, fine, really. Uh, dandy. Um... We have uh, an excellent working relationship, and, well, I mean, you know more about him than I do, you being the dad. He tells me nothing. See, that's what I mean. He is not really a talker, is he? You know, but he's... he's fine. Uh, we had a date a couple of weeks ago. I mean, it wasn't really a date. It was more like a dinner. Uh, he was cooking at my house, and... Um, well, something happened. Uh, I got a call, and I had to leave without saying anything, and he didn't know that I'd left. How odd. Well, uh, odd... He was cooking. He was cooking. Uh, yeah, it wasn't going very well, but you see, the point is, we never really talked about it since. What was he cooking? What? Uh, he was cooking a stew, uh, and it just wouldn't gel. A stew that wouldn't gel? <laughs> Uh, I guess it was kind of silly, you know, but you see, there he was. He was just stirring and stirring and nothing was happening, you know, and he had this most earnest expression on his face, you know, and, and you could tell that it was going to be so botched up, but he just kept stirring and stirring his little head off, you know, and he had this look on his face, uh, but then his glasses all started to steam up and he really just, he was about to panic about the whole thing. <laughs> Oh, God, um... She was relating the story of your ill-fated stew. <laughs> I have to get back now. Moss. Stay. He'll be fine. No, I don't think so. A sensitive boy. Too sensitive. Mm. Not really one for the ladies. He hasn't told you about his wife. In name only, of course. After the annulment, I gave him the bookstore as a consolation. So you see, everything works out. Shall we order? What? <laughs> oh, like it? Uh, I don't think so. Well, I do. Not the painting, the apartment. There's a bedroom with north light, parquet mm -hmm. floors once you clear out all this junk. Mm -hmm. So if you honestly hate it, kindly refrain from saying so. So are you really gonna just buy a place just like that? Why not? Well, just, it seems a little soon. I was gonna do it anyway. It's just that... Then there would have been two of us. Now, there's only one of me, so I'm going ahead. Mom, you are a rock. I'll fall apart when I have the time. For now, I'm doing this. Hmm. So who lives here, anyway? His name is Avalon. Lawrence Avalon. And frankly, I think he's anxious to sell. Wow. Dennis? Who? Dennis? Dennis, come out of there! He told me his name was... Let me just clear that up right now. The newspaper ad said Avalon, which is where I called from in New Jersey to place the ad, which obviously got garbled. Molly, it's nice to see you again. Hi, Dennis Widmer. Ah, then you've heard of me. Let's go. Wait, what about the apartment? Mrs. Bigford, let me assure you that even though Molly and I have met before, that has nothing to do with us. That was sorted. This is business. Shall we uh, dig her? Dennis. Dennis. Dennis, this is futile. Futile, yes. But not hopeless. Okay. I can see emotions are running high here. A grieving widow, that's understandable. 
But really, Molly, frankly, I had expected just a little more sanity from you. I'm calling the police. No, don't do that! <gasps> Molly, look at me. I'm a desperate man. My hair is falling out in clumps. Dennis, I have no sympathy for you. No, of course not. That's because you're upset. You're wondering about all those nights we spent in cheap hotels and bargain resorts. We could have been coming here to this palace. You know, offhand, I'd say you bought this place off the books under the company's name. Now the IRS is breathing down your throat and you're trying to unload it for cash before you go to jail. Now, can we go? No, you can't go. You know too much. What are you going to do? Kill us? Oh, this man is insane. Dennis, I promise you, I have no intention whatsoever of blowing the whistle on you. Sure, expect me to believe that. All I ask in return is that you disappear from my life forever. It would mean that much to you. Count on it. And you're not interested in this particular pied de terre? I spit on it. Molly, Mrs. Bickford? Completely insane. Well, give my regards to that black policeman you've been dating. Oh. Ah. I uh, didn't expect you'd still be here. Well, I stayed a little late. Um, shall I turn on the lights? Uh, no, no, that's fine. Uh, is my father still here? He never came back. Uh, neither did I. Well, I noticed that, yes. Ah. Oh. Moss? It's okay. What happened, I understand. Uh, it... No, he's very hypnotic. Uh, <laughs> I think it comes from being Lithuanian or something. <laughs> like Kreskin. Who? Uh, no, you know, the amazing Kreskin. He hypnotizes people. He bends spoons or something. <laughs> did my father bend a spoon? Well, no. Uh, how much uh, did he tell you? Uh... Oh, I, nothing, really. Uh, uh, nothing at all. Uh, you left, and then I left, and then I came back looking for you. And I'm, I'm truly tr sorry about what I said to him. I No, there's no excuse. Um, that was something that happened between you and me, and we hadn't found a way to talk about it. Um, I mean, not that we ever talk anyway, really. Uh, well, I mean, we talk. But, you know, uh, half the time, I'm not sure what we're saying, you know? And I have no idea whether you are happy or upset, but, uh, you know, um, I'm not much better at it. Um, what dog? What? Um, my father said you had a dog. Oh, look. Uh, no, hmm? look, that's what I'm talking about. What? There's no dog. You know, I mean, there's a strange man living in my apartment who may or may not be a relative. There's an even stranger man haunting Manhattan, leaping out of bedrooms at me. Uh, there's a saxophone player who uh, is pretty peculiar in his own right. And then, of course, there's you. But see, there's no dog. Uh, you know, so why don't you just put that out of your head right now, okay? Her name was Randallin. She, she danced. No, you don't have to tell me about this. It's... My father introduced us. She was, um, she was young, and she was, she was like a bird. And uh, I have this artistic look about me, and it's slumped over and foggy. Guess you thought I was attractive. Ah, uh, well, yes. Uh, but I could never quite see her I, she was always well all of her i mean she was always in in pieces and fragments and shards and curve of her eyelid and lift of her ankle her voice was like a knife and then one night we were in our hotel room in uh, Berlin, and there was this this balcony, and the moonlight was making p patches on the, um, the carpet, and, and she, she was talking to me, uh, or at me. 
Uh, well, I, I couldn't hear her uh, because the uh, light was shimmering. It's absolute brilliance. So she was talking and I was watching the light. <laughs> And then she was gone. I didn't hear her leave. And then I came back uh, here. Did I say she was a, a dancer? Uh, I think I know what you mean about the moonlight. Molly, uh, I see you. Yeah. All of you. You're very clear. Here and here. You know, that army buddy of mine that I was supposed to stay with, or wouldn't you know, his place caught fire. The boiler blew up. It was just my luck. Is that her ex-husband? No. But it's okay, though. I got somebody else. Oh. But while I'm waiting for the phone call, look what I found. His music, a whole trove. Remember when we used to stand in front of the piano and sing at Aunt Mim's? Oh, great times. See, Mike, I have no Aunt Mim. Then who was it used to wolf down all those sugar cookies she used to bake? Huh? <laughs> oh, look, here's no no Nanette. I'm kind of partial to show tunes myself. Got anything there from Evita? Best musical of 1979. Yes. Oh, was it 80? Great costumes. Uh, pretty good cast, too. Oh, uh, Patti LuPone, Mandy Potemkin. And let's not forget Bob Gunton. See, oh, I don't have I... anything there from Evita. I can promise you that. That's too bad. How about Oklahoma? Nah. Nah, nah. Oh, 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 all right, all right. Guys and Dolls. Yeah! Uh, Say, Molly plays a piano. She could play Guys and Dolls. Davy. Would you? No. I will not play anything from Guys and Dolls. I won't. Absolutely not. No. Okay, now let's hear it with a little feeling. I think we're ready. Come on. I got the horse right here. His name is Paul Revere. And here's a guy that says if the weather's clear. Can do! Can do! This guy says the horse can do! I'm thinking Valentine, cause on the morning line, the guy has got him figured out at five to nine. Can do! Okay, big ending now. Mall. It digs into the past of a suicidal woman on Spencer for Hire. Then at midnight, 11 Central, get the facts on life after high school on part one of Getting Into College on What's Up, Dr. Ruth? Now, stay tuned for another episode of Blair Brown in the Days and Nights of Molly Dodd, next, right here, only on Lifetime. And besides, she isn't even here yet, though. So... Oh, okay. About Molly. When I was 12, she dyed my hair plaid, which she said was an accident, and maybe it was. And right now she's on her way to work. And as you can see, she dresses to her own drummer and doesn't give a hoot about what anybody says. 
Why should she? Everyone loves Molly. I mean, nobody cares about the days and nights of Mamie Grolnick. But I would like to say that there are six million stories in the Naked City, and they aren't all hers. I have a story, too. I just wish I could tell it to somebody. But, no, let's always listen to Molly's story. Molly's happy, fluffy, cuddly story. She loves the world, and it loves her back. If you ask me, just isn't fair. Bitch. Very much. Ah, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, we're not open. Oh, come on. No, it's Saturday. We close at noon. So I'm five seconds late. What are you, Mussolini? Uh, Excuse me. Who's that? Uh, that's my mother. How come she gets in? I'm her mother. See? Look, it's my girlfriend's birthday. I need a book. I'll only be a minute. Have a heart, will you? Okay, but only to demonstrate to you that I'm not Mussolini. Well, this is certainly, uh, atmospheric. Thanks. Kind of Kerouac. Actual beatniks live in the attic. Mom, are you running away from home again? These belong to your father. What, his socks? What's the one thing he loved most in life? You. After that, Hulk Hogan. Ethel Merman. Books. He loved books. Daddy? All right, he didn't love them, but he had them. And I don't want them anymore. So, this being a bookstore and my being in the vicinity... Mom, I can't sell Daddy's books. Why not? Because they're Daddy's books. I'm sure he'd much rather you had the cash. Or a decent blouse. <sighs> Mom! Are you looking for something? What about your boss? Maybe he could sell them. Ah, uh, comes the dawn. What? This isn't about books. This is about snooping. I was not snooping. Yes, you were. And you're out of luck because Moss isn't here. Is that his name, Moss? Please, come on. I just think it's a rotten shame that I have to learn everything I know about you from independent sources. I'm gonna kill Mamie. Don't go blaming your sister. At least she talks to me. Uh-huh. She told me she was having dinner with you tonight and that she was spending the night at your apartment. Really? Which is more than you've told me for the past 15 years. Never mind that I raised you and kept your bottom dry. In any event, those are now your books. Do with them what you will. And since this new secret man isn't around, and since you're in one of your moods, I'm leaving. Wait, Mom. Excuse me. I can't find anything. Ah, just a second. What moods? Like you get. Testy. Maybe I'm just a little tense now. No, maybe he's about it. Uh, well, see, for one thing, I don't know where Moss is. You know, I haven't heard from him since last night. And then this morning, a very strange thing happened to me when I was walking to work. Haven't seen him since last night, huh? What? What about it? Haven't seen him since last night. <sighs> Bye, Mom. Call me when you're yourself again. This is like a My Doll ad. Have a buttercup day and sell the books. What are you doing? I heard her say there were books in here. These are not for sale. Bitch. A little help here. What's in it? Uh, just odds and ends. Bricks, by the look of it. No, wrong. It's mostly books. Even worse. Oh, Davy, come on. I lugged it this far. I mean, after all, you are the doorman. Oh, don't be blinded by the gleam off these brass buttons. And what's a doorman anyway? A man at the door. Well, thank you for that little dollop of homespun philosophy. I see. What? Now, what do you see? Davy, um, did I just snap at you? Uh, don't worry about me, Miss Dodd. I'm just a minor functionary here, hauling the Gladstone, silent as a sphinx. I'm used to the occasional unwarranted whipping. Ah, so I did snap at you. Possibly, but you didn't mean to. Of course not. They never do. 
I see. One little mistake, and now I'm a they. Seems to me we're being a little oversensitive here, ain't we? Well, you know, there may be a reason for that. You know, I may be entitled to a bad day. My guess is you're transferring your anger, passing on some deep-seated anxiety of one variety or another. Well, that's true. Lame excuse. In any event, the important thing is not to let your black, foul temper ruin your weekend. The day's young. Embrace it with a smile. Shake off that bile. Swallow that venom. Go have fun. Okay, I will. Because you're basically a good person, Miss Dodd. Well, oh, I try to be. No matter what anybody says. What? Davey? Reading material. Anyone interested? No. symphony. That was Rachmaninoff's Piano Concerto number two in C minor. Same thing. Okay. Hello, New Jersey. This is Romance Radio. Um, hi. I work in an office. The other night, my boss made love to me, and ever since I've had this awful feeling he's trying to avoid me. Should I talk to him? Mm, well, Molly, that would be a mistake. My name's not Molly. Oh. Nonetheless, the important thing is not to compound your mistake with a feeble attempt to make contact with him. Yes, uh, in Manhattan, please, a listing for a Moss Goodman. Well, I'm not sure. Ah, oh, oh, isn't that odd? I, yeah, it's probably someplace unusual, you know, a loft, maybe, or a warehouse, or, or a tree. Uh, oh, okay, uh, how about M. Goodman? Really, that many? Huh, well, uh, that's a little hard to believe, isn't it? Oh, no. I, no, no, I'm not saying that you're a liar. I was just stunned that there could actually be 23 M. Go what did you call me? What's that, the secret word for the day? Hello? <sighs> okay, that does it. Nina, hi, it's me. Are you busy? Good. Well, then get over here, because I need to have some fun. Well, maybe not specifically laundry, but that's what I was thinking. No, you didn't say laundry on the phone. You said fun, which to me is not the same thing. I see. Laundry is limp. Ah, whereas fun is uh, a surfing. Oh, OK, <laughs> surfing is fun. <laughs> but at least it's outdoors. Oh, my god, the bomb could be falling. We'd be stuck in this bunker. Ah, but we'd have clean underwear. And at least our mothers would be happy. Mm. Oh, Nina, remember the good old days. What good old days? Well, I mean, that summer that we had the apartment on Barrow Street. You just gotten back from the Peace Corps. I was looking for a job. Oh, oh, great times. Are you out of your mind? We were living on cold spaghetti from a can. But it didn't matter so much then. We laughed a lot. You know, we were happy. There were bed bugs in my futon. Nevertheless, we did our laundry together. We talked and we laughed. Which we don't do so much anymore, you know? Uh, I mean, we see each other a lot, but uh, I don't know, something just seems to be missing when we're together. We an open exchange of ideas and opinions, is that what you mean? No, I mean we don't talk. Oh, okay then. What do you want to talk about? Well, uh, blah, anything, really. <laughs> now that narrows it down. 
How about life? No, capital L. Uh, how about us? I don't like the sound of that. Fine. How about me? Okay? Now, this morning, Nina, out of nowhere, an old lady in the street calls me bitch. <laughs> really? What? She called you a bitch? Yes. And, uh... Why? What'd you do to her? See, that's the whole point, Nina. I didn't do anything to her. Then, an hour later, the very same thing happens again. Now, once, I can understand that. Twice. Hmm. So you see what I mean? I think so. It's very unsettling. I bet. So, I bring it to you. Sure. You know, hoping for a little solace, maybe, you know, some companionship, understanding. Of course. Because I trust you, you know? You are my friend. Don't do this to me, Molly. What? I'm not good at that kind of honesty. You know that. It's my weak point. Huh? Well, of course, if it's honesty you're looking for. I mean, do you want me to tell you that deep down, I think you really are a cold person? Is that it? Because I wouldn't feel right about saying that, whether or not it's true. I mean, I mean, look at me. I'm in therapy myself. Then, of course, my shrink doesn't happen to be in love with me. But, wait, who told you that? Forget it. I should be the last person to throw stones. Plus, I'm still trying to forgive you for the night my apartment was robbed. Oh, now, hold on. We weren't very sympathetic then. Of course, then it was my crisis. No, wait. That old lady may have had a point. Not that it's any of my business, of course, but given the fact that it struck a nerve. Nina, just stop, please. Well, you asked, didn't you? No. Oh. I just wanted to talk. Well... I don't really feel like talking much right now, if that's okay with you. No, that's fine. I mean, what's there to say, anyway? Oh, look. Surprise. Oh, I'll say, yes. Molly, I want you to meet someone very special. Hi. Brian. Hi, Brian. Hi. It's a wonderful name, isn't it? Oh, one of the greats. Will you have a seat? Uh, I can't. Um, the reason is I... Brian and I are having an affair. I think she knows that. Well, of course she knows. She just doesn't know it's you. <laughs> This must be kind of a shock. Oh, you could say that, yes. <laughs> if it helps any, I didn't realize that we were going to be meeting tonight either. Uh, I guess maybe kind of set it up. <laughs> Don't worry about that. You know Molly, she loves surprises. Not necessarily. Uh, and maybe he doesn't know me. Well, he feels like he does. I mean, uh, we are sisters. But we're not twins. Although I do have a twin, but not a twin sister. Mimi, I know that. So do I. I really wish you would have a seat. We're all beginning to look a little silly here. <laughs> uh, not me. I'm already sitting. <laughs> <sighs> so, here we all are. Rub-a-dub-dub. Zippity-doo-dah. yub a dub a doo Uh, do you two come here often? Mm, it's our favorite place. We know the maitre d. He's Tunisian, so don't no, order, order the, the tuna. tuna. <laughs> ah, and you, Brian, you, how about you? Uh, what do you do? I'm a landscape architect. Really? Well, wow, that's very interesting. What sort of landscapes do you design? Mine. <laughs> that's how we met. Right in my own backyard, tiptoeing through the tulips. <laughs> Well, I think I may just tiptoe over to that salad bar right now. Oh, I'll come with you. I'll be fine here. Okay, but don't you disappear. No. Mm. <laughs> oh, he's wonderful, isn't he? Sis, look, little tomatoes and chick beans. Okay, I want you to know, I think this is very, very unfair. You're right. You go first. Mamie, no, you're using me. No, I'm not. Uh, uh, well, maybe just a little. A little? Yes, all this mooning about, nose wiggling. Is, I mean, how do you expect me to react? I know, Lynn. Who? Your husband. Oh, that one. 
Mamie, there is such a thing as decorum. You're just flaunting it, sis. You know, you're throwing this right in my face. And not just mine, either. I mean, what about Mom? All these stories about staying over at my place, I mean, sooner or later, she's bound to get wind of it. This crunchy stuff is called jicama. Okay, fine. So now, think about Dad. Now, how would he feel about all of this? Dad, are you serious? Well, yes. Uh, kind of. Dad wouldn't give a damn. What? I, only Dad didn't care about me. And don't go telling me he did, because he didn't. And that's that. And give me those tongs. Mamie, Daddy loved you. Well, of course he did. He just didn't like me, that's all. And you know it as well as I. Here's what I think. I think there was room in his heart for just one girl. Maybe it was Mom, maybe it was you, I don't know. But it wasn't me. Never, ever. And no matter how hard I tried to be that one perfect one, no matter how I dressed or married or bore his grandchildren, no matter what silly little gestures of hope I would lay down before him, he could never see them because he just wasn't looking my way. That's all. He loved me the best he could. No more, no less. And the rest was up to me. It took me a long time to find that out, but now I know. And so do you, don't you? Names, have you ever read all those books that Dad left? Every damn one of them. And? Boring. Don't bother. <sighs> Let's go back. No, wait, Mame. Um, I mean, maybe you could stay at my place tonight, you know? I mean, if that would be possible. I can't. Okay. Uh, well, if you change your mind, uh, we could talk. That'd be nice. We'll do it sometime soon, okay? Okay. Can you believe it? There's three different kinds of planets. <laughs> Order any pizza? Well, they. Yes, but. Pizza. Hi. Uh, you got the wrong apartment. Doba? No, Dad. Doba. Okay. It's but... paid for. Twelve A. No, see that would be impossible. I never ordered it. No phone call. Oh, uh, oh, I uh, never mind. Uh, let me get you a tip. Oh, yes, please. Um, yes, okay. Just a minute. Okay. Just, um, I'm still looking. Um, uh, I only have a dollar. Uh, oh, yes, please. And a book. A book. A dollar. And a book. Uh, this belonged to my father. You might enjoy it. It's in English. Uh, maybe you could read it, and then you could pass it on, you know, uh, to someone else, someone maybe who delivers Chinese. And then they could read it, and in that way, we could... Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, it's a little unorthodox, I'll grant you that, but, you know, hey, what isn't these days? So, let's apply a little logic here. Now... Pizza arrives out of the blue. An old woman sits in an alleyway. Now, on the face of it, two random events, but there could be a connection. Couldn't there? Or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it is all just chaos. You know? And maybe nothing is supposed to make sense. Maybe there is no blueprint. You see, you've got these things flying around in space, you know, bumping into each other. Now, some things live, some things die. You make friends, you make enemies, you make love. You talk into half-open doorways. I, I maybe, maybe the deal is you've just got to go with what you've got. I mean, do you think that's it? <sighs> that's.
That's what I thought. Burn them, boil them, throw them in the river, I don't care. Just get them out of my sight. So we're mad as hell and we ain't gonna take it anymore, is that it? Yeah, something like that. Can we expect items of lingerie to be burned in protest? Hey, now, don't make light of this, Davy. Far be it for me to get my head caught in a propeller. But I tell you, you can't leave them books in the lobby. Says who? Says me, Miss Dodd. Well, maybe you and I ought to go up to the roof and settle this thing man to man. You mean put on the gloves? Bare knuckles. I want to hear bones crack. I want to see teeth flying in all directions. Okay, okay. Who gave you a copy of the Riot Act? No, I am just so tired of being the clearinghouse for everybody's old guilts, old grudges, old books, old everything. I am who I am. You're Popeye the Sailor Man. <sighs> Step aside, Buster. You know, I got accounts to settle, and I do not want to see these books here when I get back. Consider them incinerated. Hello, Molly. Oh, shut up. Okay, look with tears. Oh, that's not my style. If I have to be a widow, I might as well be a merry one. There's still dreams to dream, places to see, and I still love to wake up early. But I do look lovely in black. morning, Miss Dodd. Mary. Where you off to? Lawyer's office. Uh, could somebody press L, please? Uh, reading of the will, I presume. Uh-huh. Hence the drab getup. Hence. Drab as I've ever seen you. Uh, is this thing going to move or not? Hard to say. That's state of the art for you. Never had this problem with old Betsy. I tell you what. Let's all jump. If we'd have been playing Simon Says, you'd have all been eliminated. <laughs> Are you trying to look like you're from Bulgaria? I, my alarm didn't go off. I was here a half hour early. Well, isn't that great, Mamie? You win the punctuality prize. Well, uh, first of all, let me say what a pleasure it is to meet all of you. I you know, didn't know Edgar personally, but I'm sure I share in your loss. How? Uh, is that Indian? No. That's how do you share in our loss if you didn't know him? Dwight, he's just trying to be polite. May I just say one thing? Mr. Oberman was highly recommended by my husband's tax attorney. So could we just please listen to what he has to say? Because he obviously knows a lot more about this than you do, Mr. Dwight, paralegal, smarty pants. Oh, this is going to be hideous. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Bickford's uh, estate has been served with a, uh, well, sort of a notice of tax lien and intent to foreclose. What kind of a lien? Well, uh, specifically in relation to a limited partnership investment. So Daddy owes some taxes, and we have to pay it through the estate, right? Basically. How much? Bottom line. Well, considering the total sum due plus penalties and interest... English, all right? All of it. You mean there's no money? Uh, I'm sorry. <sighs> I, I feel simply terrible uh, about this. Um, it's a shock, certainly. But there are other legal avenues open to us. There are. There are. I'm sure you've got a handful of slick options up your sleeve, don't you? I just don't understand the hostility. Uh, maybe we're all just out of sorts because I was late. <laughs> Mamie! Will you please pull yourself together? Bickfords do not go all to pieces like this. 
<laughs> I'm leaving Len. What? Oh. I'm leaving Len and I'm taking the children. Oh, my God. Perfect timing, Mames. I know Len's been out of town a lot lately, but isn't this kind of harsh? I'm sorry, Mom. I just can't help it. Of course you can help it. Well, you didn't make a federal case out of it when Molly and Fred broke up. Okay, could we get out of here? Let me take a look at this notice for a minute. Hey, hey, you can't just be grabbing things like that. Ah, uh, you must think we are the family from hell. Don't apologize to him, Molly. He's doing to us what the government did to the Cherokee. May I have a glass of water? What do I tell the kids? Well, there's still a tidy sum of money to be contested, and if we follow the proper legal channels... Uh... I don't care about the money. None of us care about the money, right, Mom? Well, uh, I care about the money. I need it. I, 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 I can't leave Len and take the kids with me with no money. You'll take Len's money. Well, as Len's attorney, let me make it clear that... Walter! Uh... Okay. <laughs> so, anybody gonna watch L.A. Law tonight? <laughs> oh. Hi. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm late. Uh, what time is it? Well, uh, it's late. Where's my watch? Uh, it's almost 11.30. I had to go to this lawyer, and then after that I went home to change. What? 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 Uh, what'd you change? Uh, my clothes, uh, my face. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I tried to call, but nobody seemed to be answering the phone. Uh, I lost my watch. Oh. What are you reading? I don't know. <sighs> it's Greek. I don't understand Greek. Uh, well, then what? I like the way the letters look. And I try to imagine what it means. Like Chinese, it's very intricate and, uh, and old. Moss, mm. could you look at me? Mm-hmm, sure. Because I need to talk to you about something. Maybe I should get some bagels. No, um, no, no. See, I don't want bagels. I want to talk, and I want you to listen. Okay, uh, sure. Good. Um, well, now, uh, uh, I feel funny about doing this so soon after starting the job, but, um, okay. Would you be mad if I asked for a raise? Oh, a raise? Yes. Uh, I'm, I mean, if you think I'm doing good work. Oh, I think you're doing wonderful work. I need to make a little more money, if that's possible. You know, if uh, it's in the budget. Oh, God, what budget? There's no budget. Uh, forget it. No, no, wait. Oh, here's some money. Oh, no. And some keys. No. And, oh, God. There's my watch. Oh. Oh, it's 11.30 already. Oh, see, uh, the reason I'm asking this is my family is kind of more broke than I'd like them to be now that my father's estate is bankrupt. And I'd like to be able to help them out if I could. Well, you can have a raise. I can? Oh, of course. Oh. Well, who takes care of that? I guess I do. <laughs> uh, so what should I give me? Uh, uh, whatever you think. Okay. <laughs> oh, can I have a raise, too? I have to, uh, get my watch fixed. Uh, yeah, sure. Thanks. Moss, wait, don't leave yet. Um, mm -hmm. I need to talk to you about something else. Um, did something happen between us the other night, or was that just my imagination? It seems to me that you were there. So was I. So maybe we should just acknowledge that it happened, you know, instead of ducking behind the Peloponnesian Wars or whatever hieroglyphs you choose to hide behind all day. Uh, this is getting heavy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you bet. Um, see, I feel that we're past starting from scratch now, you know, but every day I come in here uh, and you act as if you hardly know me. And... We have to go through these same awkward rituals, which are very charming. No, I don't get me wrong, but uh, just exasperating. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. We made love, Moss. I think I have to get some bagels. Oh. Okay, fine. I no, you don't want to talk about it. I understand. Sure. Was. Is there a problem? I, I mean, if you didn't... 
I mean, if it wasn't... Was it awful? I... It didn't seem awful. But, oh, fine. We never have to mention it again. I saw Ingrid Bergman naked when I was nine years old. <sighs> my, my father's third wife <laughs> was from outside Stockholm. And, uh... I... I stayed with her that summer when I was nine. She, well, she was friends with Ingrid Bergman, and, uh, well, they'd grown up together and had stayed friends. And, uh, well, Ingrid Bergman would visit uh, for a week every summer uh, to get away from people, I guess. Mm. <laughs> there was this big porcelain tub outside the house, and one day I looked out my window and there was Ingrid Bergman in the tub uh, taking a bath. And I watched her sponge herself off, and gosh, she did it slowly, and with her with her eyes closed. And she looked like she was humming. And then she she stood up, and she dried herself off with a Turkish towel. And then she spread the towel on the grass, and and she sat down on the towel, and she smoothed some lotion over her legs. And then she laid on her back, wide open in the sun, and kind of lazily moved her hands over her stomach and her over her hips. And I watched her the whole time, but I didn't feel like I was spying, because she looked up at me and smiled. Her teeth were like they were like ivory, and her eyes they were green. And kind. And I thought that moment was the most wondrous moment I'd ever have in my life. <laughs> and that no matter how long I lived, I'd never see anything so extraordinary again. Well, I was wrong. Oh, my goodness. And now I. I have to get some bagels. Right. Bagels. Keep that great shower fresh feeling all day with Ban. Ban Solid, curved for comfort. Ban Spray, fresh and dry. Feel smooth and clean. Keep that shower fresh feeling all day. Sleeping Beauty slept for 100 years, dreaming a new diaper that stops leaks will appear. Rise and shine, a prince is here. Wearing Kleenex Huggy Super Trim Diapers with new leakage control shields. These soft barriers help block leaks and funnel wetness into Huggy's blue inner layer. This unique design helps stop leaks like no other. Now Sleeping Beauty's wearing Huggies so new, and her dreams have all come true. Huggies happily ever after. I'm Lauren Hutton, your host for a lifetime special that celebrates the spirit of Harper's Bazaar magazine. We'll take a look at what makes a woman beautiful. Style, passion, purpose, and spirit. We'll hear from the leading designers and photographers who influence how we look at a woman today. It's fashion, it's personalities, it's elegance, it's Harper's Bazaar, a celebration of women. Tomorrow at 11 a.m., 10 Central, only on Lifetime. Wind the hair around real tight. Yeah, with cornrows. And then you just go to the five and dime, you get some ribbon, you put them on the braids. Hey, uh, what are we doing here? Well, it's Spiro's. It's your favorite place. No, it's, a, it's Fred's favorite place. Oh. oh. Oh, well, it's near the bus station. I, I only have an hour. I thought we could uh, come in and grease up. Yeah, well, you know, I think I'd really rather go someplace else. Oh. Hey, Molly, great to see you. <laughs> I'll tell Fred you're here. 
Um, what? Fred is here? You know, I came in, there he was. He really looked like he needed to see you. So you became his messenger boy. Dwight, he has a lot of them. You know, he seems to send them around to visit me whenever I start feeling there might be a little clarity in my life. Just sit down. I... So, where is he? The last I heard, he was in my bedroom. <laughs> well, he's, uh, he went to Canada, and then he went to Chicago, and then he went to New Orleans, and now he's back here. Hmm, kind of like a yo-yo. Actually, I just got back the other night. Actually, I kind of sensed that. Actually, I was going to call you, but I didn't think you wanted me to. Well, thank you for your sincere best wishes and your heartfelt concern. Molly, you mad at me again. I don't like being set up. You know, I don't really like you being in cahoots with my brother. Oh, come on. I, I just ran into him. I haven't seen him in years. There's no cahoots. Could I have a cheeseburger and fries, please? Sure. What? You work here? I need the bread. Spiro lets me hack around here, and he pays me, so what the hell? I, I worked as a fry cook at Pilot Point for six months. No kidding. I used to work breakfast at this diner in Millersville, Pennsylvania. Amish food. Boy, does that stick to the ribs. Remember the Toddle House, you know, around D.C., uh, Maryland, Virginia? Best hash browns in the world. Oh, oh the chocolate cream icebox um, pie. Does that happen or what? Just, just get rid of the chicks, hang out, and eat till morning. Yeah, those were the days, weren't they, boys? You know, all the cholesterol you could eat, never had to be anywhere. Kind of a lot like right now. Look, Molly, uh, the reason I didn't stick around was because I had this thing I had to do in Canada. Uh-huh. What thing? Uh, it's a concert. Raise money for a guy. And you didn't think you could tell me that? I don't know what I thought. I just thought it was time to go. How's that burger coming? I'll check. I, I came in here yesterday. There he was. We started talking about the old days. We talked about Dad. <sighs> Hell, Molly, he was part of the family. Dwight, I don't think I can stay here. What's the matter? You just have a safe trip back, and I'll call you. I assume that your wigwam has a phone. You know... The Oguala Sioux have a saying, the best way to conquer an enemy is to tame him. Fred and I aren't enemies. I know, I just thought it was an interesting bit of Indian lore. Smell that little bit of fried heaven. Mm, what, no potatoes? They're swimming in hot grease. They'll be up in a minute. Boy, oh boy. You better order up, Molly. Five o'clock rush will start soon. Well, I gotta go. Bye. I hear you're working in a bookstore. That's right. How do you like it? Oh, I like it fine. Maybe I'll stop in. Bye, Fred. Take care of your potatoes. Oh, it is cold out there. You mean cold outside weather-wise in particular, or cold outside in that cruel world in general? Weather. Because I often take notice, Miss Dodd, of the harsh realities of everyday existence, it being especially cruel in the expectation versus realization department. Uh, yeah, well, can we just talk about the weather? Weather it is. Interesting fact that weather is actually responsible for increases in the crime rate. Maybe weather was the wrong topic. Easy conversation. No politics, no religion. Which leaves sex. I'm not in the mood. Just testing the waters. A tumbleweed hurriedly rolls away to give us this charming bouquet of desert dandelion. This child of the sunflower family is usually found growing close to the maple, and adding its fresh color to the desert candy. A dainty white petal rosy one would more likely expect to find gracing the breakfast. Hello. Hello. Hi, Mom. I want you to call your sister and tell her that you love her. Try to be understanding. She's going through a very difficult time right now. What she needs most from all of us, her family, you, me, and Dwight. I know who our family is, Mom. What she needs is our love and support. Sleep well, darling. And turn that music down.
Would you like some coffee? Tea? Oh, uh, I think I'm gonna go get a glass of water. Um, I've, uh, been thinking, um... I, th I think I'd like to, uh, to... Uh, what I said about uh, Ingrid Bergman yesterday, that story I told you, you, you remember that story I told you about Ingrid Bergman? Yes, vaguely, I do. Huh. I didn't mean to embarrass you. Mm. Uh, no, uh, well, you didn't embarrass me. Well, the story's mostly true. Mm. Except I wasn't nine. <laughs> I was ten. Yeah, uh, well, uh, nine was entirely too young. Can I change that station? Sure, just turn the dial. Um, would you like some spaghetti? So Mamie's been married seven or ten years uh, to an endodontist. Hmm. <laughs> could you watch gums bleed all day? Well, oh. no, well, I couldn't. So they'll probably get a divorce now. Runs in the family, I guess. Maybe frightened me. Yes, well, she can be boisterous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I, um... Can I use your bathroom? Well, yes, you can. three months ago that this would have happened to her. I mean, who would have thought three hours ago I was sitting in that greasy diner feeling quite angry that I would feel just fine now. Oh, well, I mean, that's the way it happens. Life is rich. It's just chock full of surprises, you know? You just leave me alone. Molly? What is it? Uh, I have to tell you something. What? I think I broke your toothbrush. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. No, it's time I got a new one. 